All right. All set? All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, I call this meeting of the Brookfield Select Board to order on Thursday, January 4th at 6 18 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, announcements. Um, this meeting is being recorded, and a reminder, a winter parking ban is in effect through April 1st. There shall be no parking on any streets between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Vehicles in violation will be ticketed and towed at owner's expense. Also, snow or ice removed from driveways, sidewalks, or private property shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across any public way, street, or roadway. Uh, Brad, will you read us the warrants, please? Sure. FY2413 payroll $193,070.70. FY2413 accounts payable $358,344.99. No withholding this cycle? No, and no, I don't no, remember why. It was an odd timing for the warrant having to be um, done because of vacations. So the withholding would be a double withholding next time. Okay, thank you. All right, we have uh, our first agenda item is scheduled for 6.30, um, interview with the highway candidate, um, John Stanton. Um, and so, uh, John? All right. All right. So my question is, do we want to get started with that or do we want to observe in the 6.30 and get a couple other things done? I would I, recommend, since it was posted on the agenda at 6.30, let's... That's, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's what I was thinking myself. So I will take a motion to uh, take some of the agenda items out of order so we can make productive use of our time. Uh, a yeah, motion. at least 10. <laughs> yeah, a motion to uh, take some items out of order. Second. All right. Um, can I get that motion rephrased to um, defer agenda items one and two to their um, scheduled time and to take all the other items? No, actually, no, I'm gonna, no, uh, my motion yeah. is to take the items at our leisure in whatever order we care to uh, uh, per our available time. Okay. <laughs> How about that? I, like I that. just. You don't need a motion to take things in the, or in the time period that they're scheduled for. Okay. I just, I, I thought to take things, I thought we would need to, I thought we, I'm good. I was just concerned that we needed to specify the order in which we were taking things out of order, and I thought we need to be a little more specific. That's why that's what I was looking for. But if we don't need it, I'm fine with that. All right. So, um, so starting with uh, number three, the uh, you didn't actually call the vote. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All in favor of taking of uh, Beth's motion to uh, take the items out of order, please say aye. 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 All right. All right, um, number three, uh, so agenda item number three, uh, Brittany T. Anniversary Vigil on the Town Common. Um, normally this would be handled by the uh, Cultural Council, but since they are in flux at the moment, I thought it best to just get this approved by us so there wouldn't Actually, be any questions. Actually, other, other um, similar types of things have come through the Social Office. There was a yeah. vigil for the January 6th event last year or the year before. Okay, I don't um, And that, that came one. through the selectmen mm -hmm. as well. Okay. okay. My, my understanding so, is that it starts at 6, it's expected to be done by 8.30, and that they have been asked to um, clean up their trash. And I think we've, um, we're planning to ask the highway department to uh, post temporary no parking signs on, Common, on the northbound side of Common Street so that people uh, don't park on the library side since that is the no parking side. And we have not put up permanent, we haven't put additional permanent signage up there because of some concerns from the historical commission. Yep, okay. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve the request for the Brittany T. Vigil on uh, 110.24. Second. All right, any further discussion? All in favor of approving the request say aye. 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 Uh, thank you. All right, school liaison. Okay. 
right, so the uh, school the school district is asking us to uh, appoint a liaison to them. So, and I know that we've got a, uh, I know they're looking to get moving on the school roof and that is not going to be a cheap project and so I think it's important that we have a liaison for this. Um, so, I think what we need to do is we need to get a, um, no, you're all set. <laughs> oh, we're all set. Yeah, we, we went out of order, and so we already approved your okay. item. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Is there anything else that we have to do? Uh, I don't believe so. No, just make no. sure that you don't block the traffic and you, and you pick up any trash. Of course. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. You're welcome. All right. So I think they're, they're asking us to appoint a member to be liaison to them. Um, I can do it again. I did it last year. It's up to you. If you want to do yeah, it I'm again, you're welcome in the roof. to. Okay. If you yeah. if you want to, I have no driving urge to do it. Yeah. I'm, unless you want. To. Nope. <laughs> All right. So I make a motion that Brad be our representative to the um, school board, or yeah. School liaison, school budget liaison from the Board of Selectmen. Okay. I'll second that since Brad's the subject of the nomination. Okay. And uh, let's see, any further discussion? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of Brad being school liaison again, please say aye. 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 All right, agenda item number five, um, the radio station license. Um, uh, Apple Country Radio has uh, asked us to defer that to our next meeting, um, so we will bring it up then. Great. So there we go. And I am going to defer six and seven just because I think we have five minutes and I don't think these are five minute discussions. So sure. I'm going to uh, jump ahead to number eight, the welcome sign maintenance. Um, as I understand, the, uh, the welcome to Brookfield signs that have been uh, maintained uh, by uh, several citizens, I forget who it was, I apologize. Mr. and Mrs. J. Mm -hmm. Is that they, uh, they are no longer going to be maintaining them. They feel that they are no longer able to do the, uh, to do the job. And so therefore, they are asking the, set the town to take it over. Um, did we identify the sites? Oh, there we go. And there are four signs, um, Route 9 near the West Brookfield line and near the East Brookfield line and Route 148 at the North Brookfield and Sturbridge line. So there are four signs to be maintained. And the expectation, the request, the request being asked of us is that we take it over and I expect that would be the highway department. That would take over the, the maintenance of those sites and mowing and such. Um, if we can't find a community group willing to do that. Yeah, so I think, I mean, and, and that would be like, my first inclination would be to, I mean, we, I, I think we should adopt them functionally. I mean, we accepted a donation of the signs back years ago when he, when he did donate them, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think it's also legit to, because at one point, I think it was Don Taft and a, a couple of other members of the community they had put together a list of like a bunch of different like monuments and like kind of not not quite owned but of value from a from a community perspective mm -hmm. and i think that we probably need to revisit that sub i think we should accept responsibility but then revisit that subject and then see if we can either get a community group to adopt them um, or you know offer the volunteer opportunity of very specifically because certain things people were actually are attached to so mm -hmm. see if we can you know even if we set up a small maintenance committee around those um, yeah. see if they can we can we can get some volunteer help to do that it might even be an opportunity for somebody who's who's still physically capable that wants a senior work opportunity mm -hmm. i think that would be like a great task for for one of the folks who does that yep. yeah yeah Okay, so I'll take, I will take a motion along that. So I'll give a motion that we draft a letter replying to the J's indicating that we will take responsibility for it and we'll um, 
you know, work with the community, you know, either with town resources or work with a community group to maintain them appropriately. Mm -hmm. And thank them for what they've done thus far um, since their installation. Second. Uh, and, and then just on the discussion point, I, I think what I have in mind is something similar to um, where 131 and 20 intersect in Surbridge, one of those open areas that yep. have plantings maintained there, and, and, and they and they say maintained by. by oh, that'd so be a so. great that'd be a great idea. So yeah. it's, I, I think that's part of what we can do for it. But yep. it's like that's that's what we could that's even what we I, could even get four different groups. Like you know, QQLA might take one, and uh, you know, A1 Sports might take another, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that's a. And if it's a, a business could even just, to, if they have their lawn maintained, they could pay a little bit extra to the landscaper and take care of that. They yeah, can, exactly. I don't need them out there doing it if they'd rather. We don't care how, just as long as it's maintained. Exactly. All yeah. right, thank you. Uh, any more discussion on this matter? All right, seeing as there's none, uh, all in favor of accepting responsibility for the four welcome to Brookfield signs uh, mentioned, please say aye. 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 All right. So that is good, and it is now. We've got enough time to probably approve minutes. Uh, I see. All right. Yeah. Well, we can we can squeeze it in. Yeah. All right. So, um, all right. We have the uh, select board minutes for uh, twelve seven twenty three. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes uh, as provided for twelve seven twenty three. Second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, and. Just to get the last one out of the way, let's shall we acknowledge the fire department report? I'll make a motion to acknowledge the fire department report for 1123, noting uh, Captain David Martell with 34 years on the anniversary, uh, and not to forget the new people, uh, Kaylee Hurley with two years. Mm -hmm. uh, second. All right. All in favor of acknowledging the fire department report, please say aye. 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 aye thank you. All right. And it is now. It is now 6.30 according to my watch, so John, would you join us please? Thank you for joining us. Um, Thank you. I think you've read all of our name plates. And then, uh, and then just for the uh, home audience, this is uh, John Stanton, one of our candidates for the uh, permanent highway superintendent position. So, let's see. So, I guess uh, I will go first, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Is, the chair. Uh, oh, here we go. Um, what about this position makes you want to leave your current position and come to Brookfield? Most important one is um, I love this town. So, I mean, I uh, grew up here, bought a house here, and never left. Um, I enjoy Highway. I originally started on Highway. I uh, was there for 10 years in East Brookfield. And part time on and off with the town of Spencer during COVID at their need. Mm -hmm. um, and also with White and Sill Water. White and Sill Water Company is totally different than what the people think. They actually not only maintain public stations, but they also maintain property, everything else that goes with it. They're actually owned by RH White Construction. So we do way more than water. Mm -hmm. There's uh, five reservoirs up there. It's all maintained, the whole nine yards. So it's similar to DPW per se. So, and I was uh, in charge over there. Brad? Uh, what do you think is important that we should know that's not on your resume? <laughs> My work ethic. Um, it's very good. I mean, just drive by my property, you can tell. Even after working hard all day long, I work hard even on my property. Everything's bark mulched, everything's clean. It's just the way I am. I'm uh, meticulous, sometimes too much. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called OCD at sometimes. Let's 
So it looks like, like you're currently in a supervisory position. Um, that resume is not up to date. Okay. I have left Whitensville and now work for the town of West Brookfield. Okay. So at the, at the time when this job was posted, it was posted one place and then another, and I did not have time to Wait. refresh. Okay. So. All right. So in your current employment is? Town of West Brookfield. Town of West The last uh, five months. In what role? Uh, secondary operator. Secondary operator. Yeah. Okay. So there's only two of us, so. Right. Okay. Um, so, understood. I, as I read through, I see a lot of experience, skills, training. All right. Talk to me, though, a little bit about your leadership style, your way of interacting with other departments, um, what you see the role of highway superintendent, how you see that interacting with the balance of the town. Um, my interaction with employees is I try to treat people the way I want to be treated but I also expect them to be working too. So there is a fine line where you need to make sure the employee is being worked, but they also need to be respected. So it goes a long way. Uh, I learned a lot working for Whitensville, a $3.5 million budget over there with, with 12 employees, four girls in the office, six in the field. Um, it can be a challenge. So the I think the fine line is going to be making sure things get done around here and making sure the employees are happy also. Okay, you answered half my question, okay. which I appreciate, and, and you answered it very okay. thoroughly. Second half of my question is how do you view the interaction of the role of highway superintendent with the other departments within the town? Uh, if they need help, they need help. I'm assuming that's what you're, you're getting at. Yes and no. I mean, you've got a good amount of experience. I mean, you're, you're currently working for West Brookfield. I'm not yep. trying to give you a hard time here. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just looking for your view, for your vision, for okay. your concept of like, like how you see it. Okay. Um, and this may seem weird for this type of job interview and bear with me because I'm, I'm usually like, you know, I, I'm, I, I spent a lot of time on this side and, and your side of a hiring table. So my questions might be a little different than what you're used to okay, okay. um so y you know you spent time as you know a, a, a good amount of time in the east brookfield highway and water department right yep. spent a bunch of time in the spencer water department and then you were with and, and it sounds like wittensville was kind of like kind of self-contained it didn't really probably interact with other departments a lot but based on your experience with like the spencer water department There's nine towns we interacted with yeah. Whitensville like, Water is not a, it's a company. Right. Okay. Don't be, don't be deceived by Whitensville Water. It's actually a company. Okay. Fair so, enough. Yeah. Yeah, providing that service to the, to, to yeah. the surrounding Nine towns, areas. nine pump stations, four water tanks. Got it. But it's very yeah. focused on the water piece. So bear with me. And right? others. And others? Yeah. Because okay. not, again, they were, they were a water maintenance, but maintenance. So if things need to be fixed at the pump station, say a fence, uh, the roadway in, everything we did, leave pickup, everything for them. So it was actually a written contract that we worked with them. Okay, great. Good, good for me to understand that. Yeah. I appreciate the detail. Okay. Um, but back to my question. Okay. Um, I'm sure when you were working for East Brookfield Highway and Water Department, um, like as a highway and water operator, so you're kind of working between the departments, Correct. right? So you probably saw a lot of interaction between the, the two departments, not just on the water stuff, but probably some, let's call it mutual aid, okay? There's a long history in Brookfield um, of providing, you know, what I would, what some people would see usually from like same department, different towns of mutual aid of, you know, at the town of Brookfield writes everybody's checks, right? Mm -hmm. So. But what's your vision of how that the highway fits in terms of supporting the water department? How does the water department and highway need to interact on big projects? Uh, what about um, storm response and experience with stuff like I think you know, it's crucial Mima that feet, highway Bima, works with that water. That sort of thing. I, right? think it's, I think it's crucial that highway works with water. 100%. 100%. I mean, we're all taxpayers here. 
regardless of whether you're on the water system or not. Right. Um, if we can save the tax dollars, if the water can help highway, highway can help water. I think it's a great thing, to be honest. I'm a taxpayer in this town too. Right. So right. anything to interact with each other, I think it's great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'll go next. Um, what is your experience um, managing um, I, the term I've, I've written down here is an, an equipment fleet? So, so well, in this, this case, the, the equipment needed to, in, with the idea being, I'm trying to understand what's your experience managing the equipment that the highway department here in Bookfield has. So I'm not a certified mechanic, so let's put that out there. Mm -hmm. But I am definitely a, we'll call it backwoods. I've done my own. Shade tree. I've done my own brakes. I've done my own exhaust through the years. I, I own several classic cars, so I'm very familiar with vehicles and how they work and when they need maintaining. Um, when it comes to maintaining, that's part of the job in East Brookfield. Was part of what you did. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you can maintain, change an oil, you do it to save the, the taxpayers money. Um, I did that in East Brookfield, even though Spencer was water mostly. We did the same thing over there. Lawnmowers, anything that needed to be done, we did. Mm -hmm. Whitensville, especially. Whitensville was actually a company. So we maintained our own. I had a mechanic over there. Um, we maintained everything. So every year I worked with him to make sure the oil was bought, the cha you know, oil changes were done, the, the greasing was done, everything. We also had a maintenance program over there too that we followed. So I'm very familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I guess, the, how I, how many pieces of equipment, um, uh, I guess I'll just ask, I'll ask the question, how, how many pieces of equipment have you managed and how old were they, or the average age might be a better? Well, the oldest was in East Brookfield. We had a catch basin truck, which I actually worked here in Brookfield for mutual aid. I mm -hmm. don't know if that still stands, but... Um, East Brookfield used to clean the catch basins here and in town, in East Brookfield, and we used your roadside mower. So um, our oldest piece of machinery over there was 1965, it was a cab over, it was a leftover tanker from East Brookfield. Mm -hmm. I was the only one that could actually drive it besides Chucky that worked there, because they had no synchros in the transmission. So if you didn't know how to drive a truck, you can't drive that truck, because it just won't shift unless you double clutch. So, so I'm pretty familiar with old stuff and new. Okay. How about project management and dealing with bids and dealing with chapter? That was my number one job besides getting the crew going in Whitensville. The last, uh, the last bid I did was one by RH White Construction with 15 hydrants being replaced in Oak Ridge. So, very familiar with that. Were you writing the bid or were you submitting the bid? I did the specs, sent it out, and they did, and they sent everything in. Okay. Wait, it was pretty simple. It really was. They already had stuff written in stone on how they wanted things. We were only allowed three different hydrants. Um, it was pretty cut and dry. So they already had rules that you'd follow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about it? You you shared with us that the that that your current role isn't isn't on your on the resume that we had because of the timing and everything takes a little while in a yeah. in a town this size, right? Yeah. So can you can you? Talk to me a little bit about the transition from from Wittensville to uh, uh, West Brookfield, and um, like from a, from from our standpoint, what should we know? I uh, the number one reason why I left Whitensville is I was one of the only questions I didn't ask was I saw Whitensville Water. I didn't know it was Whitensville Water Company. Ah. I left a municipality retirement behind. After 20 years, I didn't realize that, and that gotcha. was a huge mistake on my part. Yeah, 
<laughs> um, so I thought I could make it work. I looked into a secondary retirement thinking I could make it work. And to be honest, the 45 minute to an hour and a half drive just burned Didn't me help out. either. Yeah. It just sunk the ship. Okay. It really did. But yeah, it was a huge mistake <laughs> on my part. I'll you be know, the first one to admit it. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the the what one of the one of the keys is is awareness and and uh and the only, the and, only question they didn't ask right. i bartered for vacation time with my experience the whole nine yards and right. i it didn't die. i just saw whitensville water <laughs> yeah not realizing it was a company right so right yeah. and then and then the the downstream impact of all of that and my second pay stub is when i finally realized why am i not getting retirement Term. taken out yeah and then i inquired and they're like oh no <laughs> so, yeah, it's on you. It was a huge mistake, yes. So, fair enough. Huge career mistake. Makes uh, <laughs> that's uh, that helps a lot. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and you are aware of like the posted salary range for for this position? Um, you know, I I lost track of what's going on. To be honest, between sending it to one place and the other, I think it was posted the first time. I think I recall what it was, um, but if the job is offered to me, we can, it is what it is, we can talk about that. Okay. I'd have to double check because I'm not sure I even remember the salary range on huh? <laughs> or how it was posted. So, <clears throat> fair enough. All right. And uh, let's see. All right. Um, what is, uh, can you talk to me about your experience being the man in charge? Uh, specifically, this this position is if if people aren't happy with how the roads are plowed, they're going to be calling the highway department, and they're going to be talking to you. And I and <clears throat> I I may have missed it, but it seems like your previous positions, you while you do have the supervisory responsibility, mm -hmm. it was not the lead Direct. guy. It, it was Correct. it was it was it was not the number one, and yep. that's and that's not a knock on you, but it's just. Yep. It's like when there's a problem, people would, people from the outside would be calling your boss, not necessarily you. And then you'll be surprised, though. You'll you be might... very surprised how much oh. I've dealt with customers. Spencer has a policy where you don't pay your water bill, you get shut off. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you the interaction we get with customers yelling and screaming when you shut their water off. Mm -hmm. So I've had a ton of interaction. Yeah. yeah, but but that's I would I would consider that a little different because that's that's more transactional to me in that style you yeah. no, 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 i wouldn't say hostile but it's it it's can like, be <laughs> very but but my my point is that from from the uh from from your point of view that's a we shut your water off because you didn't pay it's a very Correct. structured interaction yep whereas as a as the highway superintendent it's the interactions are going to be i guess i'll say they'll be less structured there'll be someone saying you're using too much salt on the road it's like your your street sweeper caused damage to my retaining wall, and and things like that. And it and it's like I mean, and just it's like I mean, I need to take this call. When we, we had a brief period where we didn't have our interim highway superintendent, and it's like I was watching the weather report every night because it's like I'm going, well, there's a problem. Someone's got to tell the highway guys yeah. to go out and treat the roads. Yeah. So it's, it's like into, I it's didn't it's quite care for that. Yeah, it, it's it is what it is. A lot of people don't realize what it involves to be a highway or a water guy. There is you have to watch the weather. You sometimes you have to set your alarm every hour on the hour because we all know how accurate weathermen are. And but when it comes to interaction, I deal with it as it comes. I've dealt with it in in Whitensville also. There's been times when the employees did stuff they weren't supposed to do, um, trim grass, cut trees too close to, to town property versus. Uh, a customer's property and I've had to deal with it. We try to be as nice as possible. I try to deal with it in the correct way. I follow the rules and we try to deal with it the best way we can, mm -hmm. professionally. When you say you follow the rules, are you referring to company policy? Correct. Okay. Yep. That means you're going to have to write your own policy. Because I'm, sure I'm sure the town has it. Plenty of policies here, I'm sure. We do have plenty of policies. I'm sure we do. We have? Policies okay. and bylaws, yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that we had policies in that area, but. We have a few. We don't, and we actually probably have fewer specifically in the highway department than in some areas. We've got a lot of general policies. We mm -hmm. did at one there's, point. There's got to be between there was private also, roads. There was a, there was a, well, 
Pri so private roads, I think, has been actually handled kind of very bootleg, uh, back of the cuff for a lot of years. Uh, the only one that I'm really certain that was written is a is the highway is the driveway policy and how to handle the, the, the fees. Cuts? And, yeah, and how to handle the fees yeah. and, and that's the timelines for returns and yeah, exactly. But uh, it's probably an area of opportunity because I don't think it's. Uh, we haven't historically had people particularly. Um, I want to say paperwork focused in the superintendent role, mm -hmm. historically speaking. So it's more of a hands-on job. It is more of a hands-on job. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Until you get to the chapter ninety money and where yeah. to spend it, where to put it. Right. So um, we we haven't written. We don't. The town has policies for enforcement, but the but for the most part, the highway. A lot of, and that's the biggest challenge, right? A lot of the highway superintendent role as it's historically been filled, is really about solid common sense. It's about relationships. It's about actually understanding what the community needs, right? Yep. And there's sometimes, a, there's always sometimes some friction between needs and wants, right? There's requirements and desirements, and yep. sometimes we have to be clear about defining what the difference is between the two, right? So, um, Did you want to ask another question? Uh, if you didn't ask the question, the other question I had is, what is your experience with grant processes? And what was the other question I had? Capital planning. Grant, grant, um, very minimal. Yeah. Very minimal at all, yeah. I mean, that's not, Yeah. you know. Um, Whitensville, I probably, if I stayed long enough, probably would have got into that. Um, but that was totally different how they ran that company, so I can't guarantee it would have. Um, but you, did you say budget wise? Is that what your second question? Or more capital planning and like yeah. trying to figure out That's the long term. One vision. of the first things yeah. they shoved down my throat when I got into Whitensville because they hired me in April. So I had to have something done by July. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So. So it was a good experience, even if you classify it, was. it on, on, on Yeah, some it was, not you know, being, again, yeah. it was just a mess up on my part. It is what it is, but. How long was your capital, what was the time frame of your capital plan at Whitensville? I had plenty of time. I mean, I had to have it. So Whitensville was a little different. So it's owned by RH White Construction. So we had, we had meetings that we had to attend. So the budget had to be done a month before. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a little bit, and plus I did have a GM to work with who had been there. Let me rephrase the question. Yep. What was the time horizon of your capital plan? How far, in, how far in advance did you plan? What did you, was it a 10 year plan, a 20 year plan, a did three five. year plan? We did five, five. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I didn't. No, I, no, that's good. The question wasn't clear, so I, I Well, didn't. again, over there it was a little different because White and Water Company is a totally separate entity who sells water to Northbridge Sutton all that stuff. They don't own the water mains. They don't, they only own the wells and the water. So it's, mm -hmm. it's quite different. So you were effectively, you were a supplier to the municipal distributors. Correct. Um, a good analogy might be an electricity generator versus someone running a, a, a local light department, which runs the transmission facilities in town. Yeah. Is that apt? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure I, I, I understand yep. the situation you come from. Yep. It actually could be extremely confusing when I first got there. Because mm -hmm. I've never, you know, my 20 years of doing this, I never came into something like that. So you know, I've never heard of it, honestly, where someone owns the water and the wells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So. Yeah, no. Well, I grew up weird. in eastern Massachusetts in the town where I grew up in. We got our water from the MWRA. But I, yep. I think the so. town purchased the water in bulk of responsible. For the local distribution, Correct. so yeah. very similar. But me worked for these small towns, I never dealt with that before, so it was mm -hmm. quite confusing at first. So, mm -hmm. jumping into the budget and everything else that had to be done, it was considering there was 12 employees and it was 3.5 million dollars, mm -hmm. it was quite the pill to swallow. Yeah, was that a 3.5 million operating budget? Operating budget, okay. How big was your uh, capital budget on average? I can't remember off the top of my head, okay. I can't remember. So I have a question, and I don't know if I should ask it because I'm <laughs> because it's not something the other guy could probably answer. Does it matter? If it's relevant to the job performance, 
then it is it to a degree. Is, it is yeah. A so I mean, question. the the question I have is: you've lived in town for a long time, a whole lot. So you know know the roads around here. Yep. How do I want to ask this? What would you, if you were to take the position, would you, what would you do on day one? What would you like to see changed? How would you handle things like salting, sanding, plowing? Um, I think salting previously was done pretty good. Plowing was too, that I'm aware of. Um, I probably would stay at it a little longer because I have left for a water main break and there's six inches on my road. Um, so I would probably stay on it a little longer and start a little earlier. Usually rule of thumb is you salt an inch or less, you scrape after that. Um, I would probably stay on it a little longer, uh, especially my road, since how there is, I don't want to call it a trailer park, because Brookfield Meadows is not, theoretically. But um, the oh, ambulance goes by my house a lot. It is a trailer park. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, I would probably stay on the roads a lot longer. I'm sure they I'm sure they did the main roads just to keep it open, which is, I'm just totally understandable. And I'm sure coverage was difficult. Sometimes you can get plow drivers, sometimes you can't. So totally get it. But uh, I think we're okay there. Um, but I, I think right now the biggest thing that I see as an ex-highway guy is the edge of the roads need to be maintained. The water needs to get off the edge of the road. I see water that doesn't go in catch basins anymore. Um, granted, we don't use sand anymore. It's 100% salt. So the days of pulling gutters along over, I grew up in the old school where you always had to pull gutters every year because not only the leaves are falling, but you're sanding, you're doing a 50-50 mix. That's unheard of anymore. So the salt doesn't build up on the side of the roads, obviously it dissolves, but the leaves still do. And a lot of highway departments don't do that until the road is being ready to pave. And that shouldn't be, the rule of thumb is water kills asphalt, period. The second the asphalt starts cracking, the water can soak it up, go inside, gravel underneath gets soft, that's how potholes start. The faster you can get water off the road, the better off you can. But that being said, do we have a place to dump roadside too? So that needs to be, there's a lot that needs to be addressed. I would really love to see the most scenic spot in, Bro scenic spot in Brookfield be weed whacked. That's just my opinion. I go by it every day and it's a thorn in my side if you look at my property. <laughs> <laughs> So, but there's, there's some stuff that can be done, yes. But again, I'm not badgering anybody. I know the coverage has been bad. It is what it is. It's hard to get employees today's day and age for what salary that highway and water departments are paying. I'm familiar, I was on that end. So, I actually have acquaintances in the business. We talk about it all the time. How it's just, it's getting impossible to find water and highway operators. Because the salary is just, Low. So. All right. Um, can you list for me the last three pieces of equipment that you fixed? My 1952 Ford 8N. <laughs> you're not. You're Ford what? <laughs> I have a tractor that cleans my driveway because it's right. 325 feet long. All right. So I just tore the pistons off because they were leaking. They still had the original packing in it. Um, I changed my oil on my truck and my classic cars, so. <laughs> no, it's, no, the, re the reason I ask is that the um, one thing I've learned is that this, this is a very, very hands-on position. That it is. That there's a lot of, the expectation is that the superintendent will be, my, the way I've read it is 75% out there working and 25% mm -hmm. managing. Yep. It's like that. I may be off, but that's the, the general idea. It's, it's more than half working. You're going to have your boots on. You're going to yep. be getting dirty. There's and no so, I in team. Yeah, and so <laughs> I just yeah. And that was, and that's been and that's been a big concern um, that uh, from talking to the people who uh, who are at the highway department now. That is a big that that's a big concern of theirs. Is that they they're concerned that they would get someone who's going to stay in the office all, think, think of this as more of an office job. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, and if that's what, if that's the person we want to put in there, that's something we can do. But do we have a secretary at Iowa? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Very proficient one. Okay. Then, yes. yeah. I, why is that how we got inside? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, my first I, question. No, it's, it's yeah. a, well, my, I mean, I mean, 
Yep. I see. I see these interviews as the chance to get the oh crap moments out before anyone makes a serious yep. commitment. Yep. It's like that way. Oh, it's like oh, that's what you need. It's like I'm not. I, it's like we either say yeah, this is a good fit, or we say no. But yep. we figure this out now. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to use one of my standard, and this is standard like every interview I've given in the last probably 15 years. I've asked this question. Tell me about the last time you had one of the one of the th these three in front of you and how you handled it. An angry customer, an angry uh, person that you supervised, or an angry peer, and how did you handle that situation? Uh, I recently had an angry customer in Whitensville. We had dirty water. We had a water main break, it is what it is. So I had to go to the customer's house. I did everything I could possibly do. I took the meter off, I flushed it so she wouldn't get charged for the water. I did everything I could possibly do to police her until the water was clean. Um, tried to do my best to make sure they're happy. You know, um, I've had an employee uh, pretty upset. I dispatched him at 4 a.m. in the morning, and um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the details, but he was drunk and he got in an accident. Um, so he was he was let go, um, and he was very angry. Came to the shop. Um, we had to have the police called, and he was escorted out. Everything was done professional. It is what it is. You have to handle it the best you can. So. Um, and what was the third? Um, or coworker, and it was an or, so you, you got two out yeah. of three already. So, so. yeah, so I try yeah. to do the right thing professionally. I've been working municipality for too long to to know that. You know, in in most cases, the customer is always right, and you try to treat them the best way you can. It is what it is. You know, not, they're not necessarily always right, but you try to do the best you can. Please, a customer. Great. Thank you. Yep. Budget. Thanks. I thought we already talked asked budget. A, you asked him about capital. Yeah. Oh, no. He actually asked about budget, but I, I think that there's a follow up question regarding okay. budget, actually, um, Kelly, because I, I, I can understand why you're asking that. So, your budgeting experience to date has it been mostly bottoms up or? kind of like top down and and like where do you feel um, like what information you feel is most critical when you're trying to put a budget together the most critical thing is what's broken what needs to be fixed in my opinion that's what should be on the top of the list especially when it comes to highway if you got some trucks that need to be fixed or are going to need to be fixed that should be brought to attention immediately when it comes to highway or tractor sweep or whatever the case may be, that should be brought to attention first. Um, there should be some sort of looking into the future to see what needs to be replaced, what roads need to be done. Um, it depends on what's falling apart. That goes on the top of the list, honestly. And in this town's case, there's no town sewerage. So in Spencer, when I work over there, we sometimes you don't pave a road unless there's something else involved. So Spencer always did grants. So if they're doing over street, sometimes we would wait and do over another street with the town, even though it didn't need to be done right away, but we did it anyway. So there's a lot to think about. I know water doesn't do much replacement here, but there's always that. There's always that. that yeah, I, I wouldn't say they don't do a lot of replacement there. We actually have a very comprehensive capital plan associated with the water replacement here. Um, given the size of the, the system, so I've only um, seen them do Main Street since I've been living here. No, they did Green and they did Hayden and Hyde when when that work was done. And oh, you know there was, what? There's if been a num uh, there's been a number of other projects. They did Kimball too. Cause yeah. Think, so yeah, did it. every time right. we, every time we do a major road repair, so yeah, the water's did. doing as well as some of the other like spot repairs. Yeah. So, so again, it depends. It depends. You know, if we get a, a road out on Rice Corner that, or Gay Road that needs to be done over, well, if water's going to replace a water main, that needs to yeah. take the back seat. Yeah. So everything has to be looked over when you're doing the budget. Everything from roads to 
trucks. Right. Although labor, I think, is the largest part of our budget, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's one of the things to really keep in mind is that really, really the the money is is is. I'd have to look at the highway one. I think highway, the expense budget is pretty robust as well, but it's 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 almost I think fifty fifty labor versus expense. We'll look at it it's see. been a while. It's been a while since I've looked. What's the chapter yeah. ninety money here? What do we got every year? You know, one eighty or something. One eighty. Yeah. Low. For yeah, yeah. What we yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we usually have to accumulate a couple years worth of chapter ninety Absolutely, to run any yeah. major project. Yeah. Um, though it's handy for matching funds for grant money and the like. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, things aren't cheap. Yeah. Um, let's see here. All right. Um, talk to me a little bit in general about your project management skills. project management skills yes um, I try to work close with the contractor if that's involved um, definitely with the town to see what needs to be done um, there's a lot to project management um, is there contractors involved is the town doing some of it are they not doing some of it there's a lot to think about when it comes to project management a lot even if it's just a back road that the highway's doing drainage on, you still, things have to be thought about. Because even when you do drainage, you could wreck the edge of the road and then the road needs to be repaired. So even something a little like that needs to be done. It's a lot too project management and on the sides of the project for sure. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, let's see, I've got a, uh, I've got a, Two-part question. Um, oh. Do you have a hoisting license, and do you have experience operating a wing plow? I have uh, experience operating a wing plow. I have hoisting license, Class B CDL. I have catch basin. I have roadside mower. I have it all. All right. Again, in Whitensville, we. I was actually the only one that had roadside mower because we maintained the reservoirs and shockingly nobody had that over there. Mm -hmm. So I was the one coming out of the office to, <laughs> to mow. That doesn't make any damn sense. I know, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. When did you last operate a wing plow? Uh, for Evan over in uh, Spencer, probably okay. you know, during COVID. Okay. We'll say. Thank you. What's going to be your Achilles heel? No sleep during the winter. <laughs> Period. You get crap. A lot of people don't realize what it takes. Yeah. You know, really, honestly, you have to get up every hour on the hour to check to make sure the roads are okay when something's blowing in. Because I'm sure we don't pay for a specific weather channel yet, do we? Mm -hmm. I don't think so, so. The town of Shrewsbury, which I'm acquaintances with, the guy who runs it over there. Um, they have a designated weather channel to their town. They know exactly when it's coming in because there's actually one of their operators that actually lives up on Molasses Hill. So he has to call everyone in hours before the storm hits. Mm. So we don't have that. I'm sure we don't pay for no, that technology. No, because I actually right. I asked that question today yeah. of our current, so and he says they yeah. didn't. <laughs> so my Achilles heel is going to be no sleep. <laughs> Make sure the roads are safe. Yeah. My, well, and I think the protocol really starts with... The police department. My, um, my understanding is that the uh, police department and the state police have both kept an eye on the roads and alerted the highway superintendent I mean, that, if, that's... if conditions get to that point. And then conversely, the school will call the highway superintendent some mornings and says, yeah. how the roads look there. I know, I mean, but that's, there's cold spots that normally that mm -hmm. you don't see uptown. You know what I mean? There's, no, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, the, and the department. I wouldn't rely on the police department or, or the state. I, do, I mm -hmm. wouldn't do that to them. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that to town residents. It's my, it's my hide. Mm -hmm. no, I, I, mean, <laughs> I can't I throw that. the blame on somebody else because the roads weren't, somebody went off into the bushes, so. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks before we got our interim superintendent, I'm driving my son home from basketball practice and a couple squalls had run through. Yeah. Route yeah. 148 covered in snow. Yeah. And it's just like. <clears throat> it doesn't take long. 
hey, Mike, can you go out and cover the... Yep. And take care of the roads? <laughs> Doesn't take long. No, that was a surprise. Uh, question for you. Uh, what do you see as your biggest challenge to in... Um, would, or what, what, what do you see? What do you see as would be your biggest challenge uh, if you were chosen to lead the highway? Right this second, the plow and salt routes. Mm -hmm. Right away, and how much manpower we have. So it must take at least four guys to plow down here, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. I mean, I've never discussed years ago when Herbie was here, when Donnie was on here, when I worked in East Brookfield, we never discussed the actual routes. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be the most important right now. Yeah, my, my understanding is they have the routes and between the full-time employees, the, uh, the interim superintendent, and uh, some part-timers, they, uh, they do have, um, they do have their routes all covered. Okay, that so would be. They, I mean, it's like, we'll find, and hopefully everyone will show up on Saturday night when we call them when that storm rolls <laughs> in. <laughs> Because that's, that's when you find out, when you actually say, I need you to come in, rather than saying, will you come in? Yeah. Will yep. you come in now? Well, no. But that would be the most important right this second. Mm-hmm. But I guess I'll follow up. It's like, that, that to me is the most urgent, but... Um, well, second would be how the departments run, period. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I, I know you guys must mow the fields... And it's different town to town. It's different town to town. So, I mean, mm -hmm. do, we do, do we do cemeteries here? No. Okay. See, I, even though I lived here my whole life, I don't know that. So there's going to be a, you know, there's going to be a learning, learning curve, sure. Mm -hmm. Who does the digging in the cemetery, now that I'm thinking about that? Is that us? Cemetery. They, they hire it out? Highway does it. Highway does it? <coughs> It'd be definitely learning what needs to be done, for mm -hmm. sure. Simple things like that. I'm going to presume there's not really any commuting issues for you. A mile and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah it might be two. Okay. It might be two. Yeah. You could walk if, if, if your many cars I, break I could down. walk if I had to. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, you're far enough south, it's not all downhill. Yeah, it's all right, it's so, almost all downhill. So, it? so at this point in an interview, I typic, my, my typical go-to is, do you have any questions for us? Mm -hmm. Right? Because this is a... My only would be, would be again, we just talked about it. I don't recall the salary. I never saw the benefits package, nothing like that, so. Okay. Um, it's currently 173000 Yeah, that's what I think it is. It's, it's uh, the annual budget it is around. Is Health insurance, yeah. how is it here? Health insurance is. It's a 60 40 split. Yeah. 60 40. Yep. Do they, Tax does 60, the. 40 40. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. There's uh, dental vision available. Yeah. Health insurance immediately or six month away? Oh, immediately. I mean, uh, immediately. immediately. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's it. You have to prepay. So one month after you start, it will start. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. It, because it's a prepay. Yeah. yeah. And for the insurance company. And it's and it's not high deductible. So no, it's very it's actually very reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's how's the coverage though? Well, that's what I'm saying. The, the yeah, coverage. The, it's, it's an HMO, but it's it covers basically everything. You've got a twenty dollars copay. Yeah. Okay. Hundred dollars for I believe it's a hundred dollars for a month of a visit. So it must be similar to West, to what Spencer had. I'm sure. Probably the, pretty much the same. I mean, it's, through, it's, same through, it's through. Is it through Maya? Maya. Yeah. Yeah. Maya. yeah. So if it's through Maya, it's probably a very similar plan. Yeah. The same thing I have now. Then yeah. So that would be it. That's, I mean, yeah. other than that, it's just the standard standard benefits. So, mm -hmm. yep. and 
Anything else? Not for me at the moment. I'm sure once you leave, the three questions will pop into my head, but <laughs> that's life. Down far road. I'm not too far. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you're not, you're not too far from one of my daughter's uh, best friends. She lives in Sturbridge now. But. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. So I think we're all set. Okay. All right, John. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. All right. And it is 7.13, so if anyone needs a moment before we get started with, with Tom. Yeah, Tom. And I'm going to take advantage of this to arrange my notes. Chris, what did I tell you? My right side's my good side. This I like the camera on my right. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I know. They think so it's like that. That it's like that's a good angle for me, but we want the candy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be back okay. in just one moment. My I, my ego is large enough. I do not require to be visible on Facebook. Oh, you're on there now. Oh dear, you could have skipped me. <laughs> It was supposed to be a pause. It's a formal pause. <laughs> He's not here. <coughs> All right, are we ready to start with Tom? All right, come on up, Tom. Great name, by the way. Nice to meet you, Tom. Tom Nice to meet you. <clears throat> All right, 
thank you, uh, thank you, Tom, for coming. And um, if no one minds, I will start this again. And thank you for having me. Sorry to be here tonight. <laughs> no, good. Um, what is it about this position that makes you want to leave your current job? Um, I would like to be in complete control to run the department how I see fit to run the department versus going through somebody else. Okay, and so now it shows that you're currently, you're currently the uh, operations manager in Sturbridge? I was, yes. Okay, and so, and then, so how did that fit in? It's like, my, my guess would be that, so, was there a supervisor over you? Correct. That, okay. So okay. Sturbridge, was, Sturbridge is a full DPW, mm -hmm. so there was the director that consumes highway, sewer, and water, and then I was the operations manager under that person mm -hmm. and pretty much just dealt with the highway side. Okay. When did you leave your current position? Uh, November of this year. Well, 24, 23, sorry. Brad, did you want no, to ahead. ask your question? Or you want me yeah, to go? go okay. Ahead. So um, I'm going to ask the, pretty much the same question that I asked as much as I can recall, because I did do a little ad lib during the last interview, so bear with me. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about um, what your leadership style is, and then what you, what do you, what's like your vision for this role? Like, My vision for this role? Yeah. To <coughs> utilize the current budget to make it go as far as it can go. Uh, morale in the department, in any successful company, the most valuable asset is the people. Uh, unfortunately, with the world today, that's not so true anymore, the way it is. Everybody's a number. But through experiences in my past and just studies with those different companies, that if, if you treat your people right, they'll treat you right. So my goal would be to build a relationship with the employees as well as the town departments, committees, as I had in Warren when I was there and just move forward to work together to perform the job that I need to do in the best interest of the community. So, so interesting that you referenced Warren. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about or share with us a little bit about what do you think was um, kind of like your, your best achievements there and what do you, where do you feel that, that you maybe learned a lesson that you would apply to, to having things go even better here? I think some of my greatest achievements over there is I was, to my knowledge, the first superintendent surveyor there to ever include pavement maintenance okay. in a town versus just do the worst first. Studies have shown that you doing the worst first, you're just going to get backed up and backed up. And I got uh, I could sh show you presentations on that very aspect. Um, <coughs> I switched from a sand salt ratio to pure salt. Um, the town didn't like it. Some of the townspeople did, some of the townspeople didn't. It's the right thing to do for the budget. It's the right thing to do for the environment. Some people didn't like it. I no longer work there. Um, I missed what you said. Did you put more salt or more sand? I, I took out sand completely. Yeah he, yeah. yeah, he went to straight sand, uh, straight salt, salt like, like, like most, most communities have, I believe, Correct. at this point. Sand is actually an insulator. So, I mean, it does have its place very rarely. What about around the lake? That's... The place. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily want to use sand. I'd use more of a coarse... What they call out west is like a bivy chip, or some people might be more familiar as like the stone that they put on a chip seal. It's just a little bit more coarser. So in, in the effect of that, especially in an ice storm, where if you just put sand 10 minutes later, it gets glazed over. Where if you put a little bit bigger stone, it'll get glazed over, but as soon as a tire hits it... It, it actually breaks it loose and it actually gives you traction. It'll actually get traction from it. And it allows you to use your snow and ice budget to do 
some of road maintenance because you're putting stone in. It's mm -hmm. funny. Okay, thank you for that. All right. Uh, let's see. A uh, question I had. Um, can you tell me? Um, can you tell me about the f equipment fleets you've managed? How many pieces? Um, what were they, What what kind of equipment and their age? Uh, some of the stuff in Warren was pretty old. I believe one of the oldest trucks that I had there was an '84, and I still think to this day it's a frontline spreader. Mm -hmm. um, some of the stuff in Sturbridge is there wasn't too many too many old pieces of equipment there. But I've, as far as equipment goes, I mean, I can't really go into Sturbridge a lot. I really wasn't there long enough to um, deal with the deal with the equipment. But I mean, they had. Sturbridge had, I believe, six or seven pickup trucks, four or five large CDL trucks, one ten-wheeler, two backhoes, bobcats, compressors, and then we had cemeteries too, so there was a bunch of lawn was involved. Mm -hmm. And then in Warren, I had, uh, I had five, six CDL trucks when I left. Three, two one tons, three one tons, and a pickup truck, and then backhoe loader, sidewalk plow, oddball stuff. So I've had my share with maintaining and dealing with enough equipment to keep the crews busy. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And then, what was your? Uh, let's see. I'll ask that question later. Brad. How do you handle task management? So I guess going back to Warren, how did you handle the day-to-day -day task management? Would you typically send the guys out or was it always all hands on deck for every, every uh, project that came up? No, it wasn't every project all hands on deck. I mean, there was, there was definitely times where I would be out in the field. I actually enjoyed being out in the field, just depending on what was going on. I had, you know, two two teams. It was a five five people on the, on the department, including myself. So I had two teams of two, and then myself. And then if there was a big project, it would be three and one by themselves doing something, or all five of us, or just depending on what was going on. And how often were you in the office in Warren? I'm just trying to um, what Warren was like compared to here. It was a, it was a working superintendent's position. Yeah. I mean, um, the unfortunate part. I'll just wait till it. <laughs> the unfortunate part in Warren is I didn't have a lot of staff assistants, so I had yeah. no secretary. And so all the paperwork that needed to be done, I did. Yeah. So I would say I was in the office maybe a day. Yeah. A day and a half, depending on what was going on. You know, budget season or town reports or. Chapter 90, yeah, it takes a little bit, a little bit more, but I was generally out in the field seeing what needed to be done, inspecting um, resident complaints, looking at issues from weather, which has been a nightmare for the last couple of years with the rain and stuff like that. How about uh, mechanical skills and fixing things? What's your experience with? I can turn a wrench. Certainly something that I'm not good at at all. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's I can do basic stuff, oil chain, you know, if chains need to be tightened or swap out blades on the mowers or plows and simple stuff like that. But as far as something broken and me fixing it, I don't have that skill, unfortunately. And that was one of my biggest downfalls that I hated in the Warren is I just didn't have that ability. But there again, too, if, it's, if you're working with a job with someone, you're always able to, to help out and get under there, and I have no issue doing that. It's just going to be a matter of if, if, I'm, if I'm there by myself to try to figure out something that's a little bit complex, it's probably not going to get done. And I'm being straight up honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that counts for a lot. <laughs> it used to. It used to, not so much anymore, unfortunately. Fair enough. We're a little old school around here. That's good. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I asked the same question of the last candidate um, because they had recently changed jobs. You've recently um, wound up, you know, not staying with the position that you started with with, with Sturbridge. What are you comfortable sharing regarding the, like, why Sturbridge, why you're basically in front of us and why maybe Sturbridge wasn't a fit? I'm basically here. It's kind of hard to say that in this situation. Right, understood. Um, Whatever you're comfortable sharing. You Whatever you're comfortable sharing. In, in different situations. But it, it came down to kind of misled and not allowed to do what I would like to have done. Okay. And I'll kind of leave it at that for now. Fair enough. So it was just incompatible with what your expectations were for the role? No, I wouldn't say it was that. It was just, I was kind of told one thing and what I was told wasn't exactly true, and it could have been just a miscommunication from how I interpreted it versus how they interpreted it to me. Okay. As well as just told not to do things that I normally would have done. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it. How about, you know, we see what's here on paper. What do you think we should know that's not here on paper? about you? Uh, I had my own landscaping business for 15 years, just me by myself, right out of high school. Uh, just kind of shows my character. I've been a worker since I've been able to work pretty much. Always been a boots on the ground guy. Warren was the first job that I had where it was an office management setting. Uh, I liked it. I love the municipality. I love running equipment. I love being outdoors. I like helping the community. Um, I don't know. I mean, you could, I could call references and stuff. It's just, it's just, I do the right thing, whether it be right or wrong, mm -hmm. to a point. No, I, and I guess, an, I guess an example of that is the, one of the past towns I would, they preferred more sand. I pre-treated. Person asked me, Tom, why are you putting out salt? I said, well, it takes two pounds of salt to prevent an inch of ice, but it takes 10 pounds to melt it. Now, I don't know the exact ratio, but it was that type of conversation. And they go, really? So? And I'm thinking, so? <laughs> you want to spend $2 on salt? Or, or $10, $10 on salt? And here again, I'm screwing the numbers up here, but that's my point. Yeah. Um, Former employee there, yeah. I used to pre-treat. Oh, he didn't waste any time, he wasted any time, he's just gonna bounce off the road. They're a superintendent in a nearby town and they don't go out without pre-treating now, which was something I implemented 10, 15 years ago, around here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, I was a guinea pig in Warren for a lot of stuff. I tried a lot of different paving preservation techniques that were never done around here before. Almost all of them worked. The one of them that failed, I would still do it again after my experiences with Merino, with asphalt emulsions. But one of the jobs I did, I used what they call the modified top, which is large stone and small stone. And as the asphalt aged, because there was little fines, two little fines, it dried up earlier, which caused it to ravel, which is those little pieces of sand start to come out of the asphalt and it starts to break up. I was able to save money by doing the project that way, but it started to fail earlier than normal asphalt would because there wasn't as much fines. Would I do it today? Yes, but I'd put a fog seal on top of it at half the price, not probably less than half the price of another inch of asphalt. And it just, it all, and it all depends on the road conditions. 
but yeah, I was a guinea pig for a lot of stuff like that. I'm not afraid to try different things. Once I've done enough research on them, or I've got enough feedback to see if they work. And I guess an example of that is I did what they call a cold in place recycling. I went out to Pittsfield, Mass. Actually, no, it was, um, I can't think of the town offhand. West Stockbridge. Stockbridge. Yep. I went out to go see that process done. And I took my form out. And I tried it the next year, and it still, it's still in good shape today. And it was half the cost of a reclaim job, which is grinding the road all up and paving it. Mm -hmm. Like no, no, actually, no. But we will even. We started at point A. We will wind up at point yeah, Z. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We may stop a couple of different ways along the way. Um, what, what experience do you have with grants and soliciting grants? And I've done a little bit with the assistant part. We had the same grant writer that you guys had here for quite a while in Warren back then. So I've oh, done Bill, a little bit Bill, whatever his of name it. was. Mr. Scanlon. Yeah, there. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've done a little bit with them, but nothing in depth. Yeah. There again, it's it's time. Mm -hmm. I can either be in the office of doing grants or out in the field performing the work. Which one do you want me to do? Can't do both. Yeah, and and in, in our structure here, just informational, we've gone away from having a consultant. We have an actual in-house grant writer. Um, you just have to support her with the information right. needed in order to properly right. build it, right? Um, I know back before we had her, <laughs> I was doing Oliver GIS work for the highway department in my spare time. So I'm grateful that we, we have somebody now that... Does the town have that. GIS now? What's that? Does the town have GIS? Town doesn't, but the state still provides it for free. So anything you need for maps and stuff for grant submissions, you can pull off of the intranet. So yeah, yeah, no, that was that was going to be a big part of my uh, job in Warren with the and not Warren Sturbridge with the MS4 compliance, which mm -hmm. is stormwater stuff. Doesn't apply to us here because we're so small. But with the, the, the GIS and that was something that I wanted to kind of implement in Warren because it, it eventually going to come. But the Restrictions are getting worse and worse, and I'm sure there's a gentleman here that would agree with me. With her, you know, the restrictions are getting worse and worse with stuff, but it'll eventually get here, and it's an ultimate tool to have to be able to calculate and make life so much easier. Yeah. So, um, what kind of experience do you have from a standpoint of building budgets, and would you consider yourself a bottoms up or top down budgeter? And um, I could, you give me a number to shoot at, I can delegate it where I would want it to go, no problem. So as far as designing the budget, yeah, I've done it several years and more. How about risk analysis for what, if, if we give you a number and you know it ain't enough, how do you communicate what the cost of, of, of the, the price tag we gave you is going to be? You know what I mean? If you give me a number and I find out that that number is not enough to do what we want to do, I can show you in spreadsheets. Okay. That's good. They are spreadsheet people. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Now they, you speak in my language. They are spreadsheet people. <laughs> so speak in my language. That's a bonus. You know, I'm no expert, so if you get some time, I'll be more than happy to learn. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I guess I guess that you could say that was one of my accomplishments in in Warren too. And like I say, it's it's something I kind of pat myself on the back. That was really the first office type job I had. But I made a spreadsheet on Excel of every road in town and every type of paving project that you could do on it, as far as like a chip seal or a reclaim or everything else like that. And I set it up where you could just change the dollar amount per square yard, and it gave me a price for every road in town on any type of those, um, any type of process that was required. Nice. That was a little time consuming, as you said. <laughs> I'm sure, but once you got it, you got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. 
Something I still have. <laughs> Just need to change the roads. So don't feel you need to answer this question if you don't know enough about it, but the town of Brookfield, I mean, you're not far away. What do you know about the town of Brookfield? What do you think we've done well in the highway department? And what areas do you think could use improvement? Well, I know your garage compared to the one that they built in more is twice the building at half the cost. Not that it was that drastic, but it's, you, the building that you have here was, I want to say $300,000 less than they have in more, and it's four times the building. So kudos to whoever did that. I know the town has approximately 40 miles of road. I know that the the budget is about 500,000 from what I did research on, but I'm not, does that include the chapter 90? No. 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 Okay, so it's 700,000 with chapter 90. I know that there is currently three guys at the highway department now. Two. I know two, yeah, two. Two in the interim. Interim, correct. No, they're, they're, well, yeah, there Ernie. are two. One position has not been filled. Yeah. Well, I think he's counting Ernie. Right. Oh, is he counting Ernie? Oh. Yeah. yeah. So there's the vacancy of the superintendent, two people, and then there's supposed to be one more, correct? Yes. Okay. So I know with that budget, with the 40 miles of road, it's four guys, which puts the highway budget to 100, starting to get the age where I need my glasses. I got a spit here. It's, um, for every 40 miles of road at a $700,000 budget, at least 12,500 miles for every mile of road in town for the year. That is not nearly enough to do anything to Can preserve. Can you tell him that that is his budget for, for wages? <laughs> I don't know. You don't want to tell him okay, that. <laughs> okay. So I know budgets are huge things with town. People don't want to pay more taxes, but they want more, more service. It's one or the other. Well, that's if, where, if, I, if, that's if where I, I... That's if, where... That's where... Well, I'll just, I'll just give you a little history on that, though. Brookfield has been... Knock on wood, so it continues outrageously successful regarding bringing in outside money beyond the highway budget to be able to do the road maintenance. Mm. If it wasn't for grant money, we'd right. be, we'd be done. Okay. Mm. Um, as you know, there's some opportunities for improvement. There's probably some opportunities to, to leverage the, the funding that's there better. And, and if we can continue the, and I think we need to continue the focus on bringing in outside money to maintain the roads we, yes we have the resource of of our grant writer we have we've historically previously had our our highway um, secretary also at least help identify and and yeah. submit um, grants though I don't know that Lindsay's done much of that work I don't know that she's needed to and she hasn't had to because she because of here. Kathy yep. yeah yeah because Kathy did the um, she did the one for Central, Central Street. Streets. Well, actually, no. Uh, the, the highway portion of that was done directly from the highway. It was from the but highway I don't department. Know if Lindsay was there. No, I think yet. that was before. I think I think that was one of the last ones that um, mm. Cindy did. I think the that was before was, the administrator. Now, that, I, yeah. I think that um, the funding was in place when Cindy went. Yep. Know, yeah. Very close. Very to close it. to it. Um, I think it was submitted and it maybe hadn't come back approved yet. Mm. So. Um, so there's support there, and and that's that's why it's really critical to kind of, you know, ensure that you kind of foster a relationship there. I do want to go back to a question that I, 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 I alluded to, but I don't know that I hit that hard. You sort of already covered it, but I'd like a little more detail. Sorry about the talking well, with fine. the hands. It's fine. Okay. And that's the... Uh, um, you talked a little bit about your experience working with other departments in Warren. Channel for me the, the police chief, the fire chief, and if they had a water department, the, the water person in Warren. What would each of those people say about you from, from how you worked with them previously? Like, what would they call out about you? Um. Attentive, and I guess an, an example of that is something that my crew made fun of me is I always traveled with the radio on scan so I could hear what police and fire were doing. Um, I guess an example of that is the 
car accident that took place from the high school. I was at the high school entrance with uh, Jersey barriers in the back of my truck before the fire truck went by to close down the road. I had a, a medical call from an elderly couple that the driveway hadn't been plowed yet. I left my house and was making the last pass on the driveway when the ambulance showed up. To my end. If the town doesn't like certain things like that, I'm going to do them anyways. I plowed the ambulance down to Mary Lane Hospital when it was open. It's going there, it's serve, protect, safety. If I didn't plow it and the ambulance went off the road, it's a $250,000 ambulance that needs to be repaired. Taking 15, 20 minutes to plow down illegally out of town, pretty cheap insurance policy. It's just, it's just who I am. Whether, and, and, and that could be the wrong thing to do. But at that moment, public safety, I do it. Um, I, I, always, I always worked with them best I could. Um, different, different situation, I actually worked with the police department in a drug operation one day. I had an undercover police officer with me. We were marking up the short roads, drawing all kinds of paint, waiting for the stuff to, <laughs> stuff to come down. The S hit the fan and everything was done. It's, it's who I am. I guess part of that is because I went to the Reserve Police Academy too, so that's in my blood just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm so glad I didn't go in that career. But, it, but you know, they'll, they'll say I'm, I'm kind, respectful, always willing to help. Thank you. And you could call both chiefs and Warren right now and say that. Awesome. All right, uh, question: Do you have do you have any do you have a commercial driver's license, um, hoisting license, or experience operating? I have a CDLB mm -hmm. and a two-way hydraulics license and a 4G. So I can run a backhoe, excavator, loader, and uh, over the guide rail motor. Excavator, over the guardrail mower, and what else? A backhoe, a, back a loader, skid steer. Okay. Over the guardrail mower, is that the mower on the big arm that we just yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the side of the road mower. Yep. No, I, I, I know it comes around every year in June, so it's like, I just want to make sure I, I understood the kind of, it's like you said it, so I want to make sure I have the right picture. And if you're the only one with that license, will you be the one out there mowing? If you put me in that machine, I'll be a happy little boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that. It's like, you know, Baypath is offering a class on hoisting licenses, and I looked at it and said, ooh, I could take a class and drive a piece of equipment. And, that, and that's, that's the weird <laughs> thing. I never got my hoisting license until I was with Warren. Mm -hmm. And I still remember the first time I got in the backup. I mean, it, that's something that you learn in the seat. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, we, I rented one for a decent job when I got started, I was just playing around with it on lunchtime, but it would take, it would take me 45 minutes to an hour to do, and my foreman would do in 10 minutes. It's just time to see. So I first got in that backhoe and I went, okay, boom out, I thought, okay, dip her out. You know, that's how I started. Mm -hmm. When I left Warren, I'd probably be comfortable enough to operate around gas lines. I wouldn't be fast at it, but I was I don't want at that, to be at that fast time I was comfortable enough to do it. Mm -hmm. So there again, it's it's time in the seat on that. All right, and I I, I missed writing down. Uh, do you have experience operating a wing plow? Yes. Okay. Thank I you. actually got the first wing plow in Warren, the 2015-16 season, and I couldn't imagine what that town would have, wouldn't have looked like if I didn't have that truck. Was that the Which year we got all the, the snow? Hmm? Was that the year we got clobbered with snow? Every Sunday. Yes, I, I remember that. Five, five weeks. Mm -hmm. That was that was, the year. that was a crap winter. <laughs> huh? That was a crap winter. <laughs> well, it was great until January, the end of January. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I fought to get that piece of equipment, unfortunately, but I did get it.
Talk to me a little bit about your, like what's your concept of what good project management looks like? Good project management is you need a start point and a finish point. Once you have an idea of the project, you have to line up what you're going to need for supplies, what you're going to need for manpower, what you're going to need for a time frame, what you're going to need for equipment, and then it's just coordinating to put all of those together from start to finish to get the job done. Thank you. And then you got to throw in the weather too if you're talking <laughs> outdoor stuff. What is the term that we use for the extra funding for projects? Is buffer. Yeah. Buffer. <laughs> buffer. Yeah. Time. Weather has no buffer. Time, labor. Well, the buffer is to account for the time and the money that the weather is going to cost you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. <laughs> it's just it. The weather washouts last couple of years have been outrageous. Uh, question. Are you, uh, are you prepared to spend 75% um, of your time out in the field Absolutely. working with the crews? Not that I'm afraid of it, but I'd rather spend more time out in the field than in the office. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, that's where my skill set lies more. Mm -hmm. I can do the stuff in the office. It takes me a little bit long because I'm not doing it every day. Mm -hmm. Oops. No, I, I believe we have a uh, good admin in the uh, in that department right now. Correct. And they're ready to support whoever comes right. into the role. Yep. No, that's yeah, not an issue at all. If I can, if I can supply that person with the numbers to get them to do what I want. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time out in the field to be more productive with a, such a small department. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know. It's, 10 miles of road for every guy, and that's with four people. Is it 40 miles in town? Yeah, 38. Okay. Close enough. Yep, roughly and 40. does that include the gravels? Nope. Okay. So it is probably 42-ish. Is that about what it is? Yeah, okay. probably. If you include the private roads that we actually do plow. Right. Yeah. Brad, if you don't have a question, I have one last question. Yeah, go okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, well, this is this is about Just the pacing. This it. is about the pacing that we did before. We were close to the end on at thirty. Um, talk to me about an example from each of these three scenarios, okay? If you would. Last time you dealt with an angry customer. Define angry. Uh, like agitated to the point of belligerence. Okay. Okay. In your face, red face, elevated voice. Okay. Um, last time you had to either deal with a problem employee or, again, a disgruntled employee. Uh, and the last time you had to have a difficult conversation, whether it was because of something that they were upset about or something you were upset about with a peer or like an equivalent like department head that, you know, somebody of kind of like equal rank to you. Angry customer. I can honestly say I've never really had someone that mad. I've had a couple of people that have come in a little heated, but nothing really, really crazy. And you, you, the best way to kind of address that is to make them feel like they're in charge. Stay calm. I understand, sir, ma'am. I can take a look at the situation. If there's something I can do to repair it, I'll repair it. If there's something that I can't do to repair it, I'll let you know. That doesn't go over sometimes, but that's who I am. I'm not going to say I can fix it, knowing damn right well that I can't fix it. Not happening. Um, it's just a matter of staying, staying calm to keeping them calm and level-headed, and then when everyone's tempers cool down, you can have more of a conversation to resolve the issue. 
uh, problem employee. Uh, something I also really didn't have a ton of issues with, but you know, he make a note of it, say something to him privately. Um, depending on what it is, it might be something that I say in front of the whole group without saying who it's about. It just lets everybody know that I'm watching and it's letting that person know that I'm really watching them. <coughs> they probably know that I saw it from there. And then if it still continues, you just go through the processes of documentation and uh, making upper management know and written warnings. And if it comes to termination, it comes to termination, unfortunately, depending on what, what it is. You know, if it's a safety issue, it's, it's definitely going to get looked upon a little bit more seriously. And then a different difficult conversation with the coworker and peer. Same thing. You just you just stay calm. Um, understand their side and make sure you put yourself in that person's shoes. Ask them to do vice versa, and if you talk it out enough, you can usually come to a reasonable agreement. Okay. Thank you. Question I asked previous or not previously with the other candidate. Um, what are the last three pieces of equipment that you fixed? The last three pieces of equipment I fixed. My own snowblower. All right. <laughs> um, fair answer. Pretty much it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, my my position with with Sturby was totally hands off. Mm -hmm. Um. Kind of sad about it. I actually wasn't really allowed to get in the equipment as much because of the way it was set up. But as far as other maintenance stuff, it's just like I said, just just small stuff. I'll I'll tinker with stuff around around my house, but it's and I know it's a downfall. It's something I usually shouldn't sell you, but that's who I am. It's it's definitely my downfall in this position is my mechanical skills. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I mean, I'm not afraid to get under the air in a system, and if I pull a plug and get covered with hydraulic oil, it's my own damn fault. <laughs> but I'll get covered with hydraulic oil and learn not that that hose does that. <laughs> Just make sure you wear an eye protection, yeah. please. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's a couple other things, too, that... Uh, back to the safety thing, I think it's on, on my resume, but I was a safety yeah. instructor with base day. I was a lead groundsman with a tree company for three years, uh, running a wood chipper. Uh, I worked on Nantucket Island for a summer as a police officer. I had my own landscaping business, as I said, for 15 years, and it's just kind of who I am as far as that. And it's where I kind of got off track a little bit on that conversation that you asked. That's okay. It's all good. So, um, you've already actually covered one of my typical questions, which is like, what, what do you feel like your Achilles heel in this job might be? Okay, so I'll, I'm going to spare you that for repeating yourself. But what could you tell us that would make us think you're the right guy for the job? Uh, I have the experience, I have the knowledge, I have the passion, and I have the desire. I love, I, I love running equipment. I like building things. I mean, one of the first jobs I did in Warren, I guess, was a, a retaining wall, going back to the landscaping business. So I made a retaining wall along, this, along a stream, beautiful. No one's ever going to see it because it's facing the stream and the road right there. But that was the first stone wall I was able to build without using just my hands. So it was just, it was like a, it was a, a pride thing. I mean, this beautiful stone wall, no one's ever going to see it. And I'm like, oh. But it's, it's that's, it's who I am. I, I, I like helping the community. Um, you know, it's, I, I try to do the right thing for the situation that arises. Okay. 
Do you have questions for us? Um, yeah, I guess I guess I know it's working collaboratively collectively with with each department and so forth. But is the highway is that my department on what I choose to do, or is it the towns and yourself with input, which is always good to have input on it? It's like is I guess the question is, is it, is it going to be my department to run as I see fit? That's a good question. So historically speaking, it absolutely has been the highway supers to run. Okay. With clearly with input relative to things like, and I'll give you an example. We might have, we might put together a town capital improvement plan. We would get the highway supers input on what they think needs to be the road projects on that plan, right? And then it would be your job to go ahead and execute against that plan, but you had an investment in that original plan, right? right. Um, I will say probably, and, and, it's, and it's one of the things that we're gonna probably would really have to talk about in the go forward. I think the place where perhaps as a town we've let down both of our more recent highway supers has been not giving a whole lot of guidance necessarily and letting in, people get themselves like in a bind so fundamentally. It's not an elected position, it's Correct. an appointed position. Yeah. So it's a supervisory Correct. position that reports to the board of selectmen. Yeah. Correct. So, mm -hmm. But okay. do we get involved typically in the day to day of the highway super role? No. no. Yeah, we but have, we get a lot of questions we, from residents. But, but we do get a lot of input from residents. Yes, we, we have not become involved, and I'm I, speaking for myself. I'm not. I'm hoping we don't have to become involved because that's usually indicative of a problem. And so our our intention here is to uh, pick the uh, is to pick the candidate that we think is best, and then with the expectation that they will uh, run their apartment, um, run the roads well, keep the, uh, keep the townspeople happy, and uh, both through the uh, service they deliver and the value they deliver to the town. Yeah. And, and keeping, the keeping the department stable and keeping the yeah. employees happy, and that's yeah. necessary for long-term success. Yeah. I, I, right. think the, I think the big key, though, is gonna be in the two-way communication, because yes. I, think, I think historically speaking, a lot of times, a lot of times that's been kind of like the, the downfall because, and for example, if we're more aware of what your plan I is. just going to say that. Right? This is what if, I'm planning to do. This is why I want right. to do it. Then, do then when somebody comes and says, well, what the hell's highway doing? Right? We're able to say, well, this is exactly what, what highway's doing. Not because we've told you what you're going to do, but because you've communicated kind of what the plan is, how it's going to get handled, um, that sort of thing. So. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, it's. That's just it, and I guess you know you brought up the situation with the problem. Is I had people, I didn't want to call here and bother here. And look, if you have a problem and I don't know about it, I know I can't address it. But if I know about it, then I can either address it and fix it, or I can let you know that I can't fix it. Yeah. But I need to. Same thing. You need to know what I'm dealing with. I need to know what you're dealing with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, that was kind of the big one, just, you know, it's, especially with my past in, in Sturridge, it's just, you know, like I was pre-treated. They wouldn't pre-treat, they get laughed at, they said. That's why I used to hate to drive through Sturridge. Oh. You know, I, I was like completely dumbfounded by that. So, uh, no, that's that's kind of it for me. I, I no, I came in on the tail end. The benefits was kind of the questionish thing for me, which I just heard previously. So, you know, I'll see where it goes. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me. Great. Go from there. Thank you. I think we're good. I'm good. Yep, I'm good. All right. Thank you very much. All Tom. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Ladies, thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.
so what do we got left on the agenda? We have nothing left on the agenda. We do. Six and seven. seven. Oh, six and seven. Oh, <laughs> shoot. All right. Yep, we do have those. I skipped those. All right, so. So uh, we set so up a separate time to discuss? Yes. Well, yeah. Anything? Okay. It still has to be done in an open meeting, but you need time to think about it yeah. before you jump any decisions. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like a little bit of time. Yes. I think the two things I would like is a little bit of time, and do we have references from both of them? I can yeah. check with the company. Okay. I would. Oh, uh, I mean, there's references. There's references in the, re in res in res in right. the resumes. Yeah. I so, I so uh, one of my things that I would like to see happen before we make any decisions is because <laughs> there's been a, a history in this town of not checking references <laughs> to some pretty ill effect, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would like that we do our own internal check of references okay. uh, prior to our next meeting when we discuss. I'll reach out to the town and see if they've already done that. <coughs> That'd be great. And if they haven't, and if then... They have it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that would be that'd be my biggest biggest thing that I'd want to want before we have any further discussion. So I don't know if it's appropriate for this now, or we can do it at that next meeting. But I mean, one of the troubles that I'm beginning to have now, and I've talked to Kelly about this, is the people that we're looking at and what they do. Um, they seem to be more working type then although i thought he was a little bit more supervisory um i just have a hard time and tough time swallowing the pill of paying seventy three thousand for someone not doing really all the job duties of a highway superintendent that that, that would probably be understood but probably better to be discussed at the next at, at another meeting, unless you want to open it up to this okay so i was gonna I, I was gonna say so 73 so for it, it's yeah i was gonna say it's it's basically 36 dollars an hour i mean you're lucky to get what we're getting for 36 dollars an hour absolutely okay. in this economy it's very very low stuff I mean, and that's just that's just a fact. I mean, it, it's more we're paying highway foreman wages in most other towns for our highway superintendent. So we're getting what we pay for, which is a foreman. Mm -hmm. Then that's what I was kind of getting at. Is so, it so seems like we're hiring more of a foreman. Than so, which is the whole reason why MRI was so irritated with us for changing her job description, is that if we want a super that's going to be a working super, your working super is really technically a foreman mm -hmm. that we call a superintendent because that's what the title is. Um, that's what we're paying for. That's the candidates that we got. That's why they were irritated with us for changing the job description. Um, that that's what it is it's not necessarily a bad thing for this town so long as the the guys know how to manage a crew we've done really well in this town having the secretary run the office and the super functionally be a foreman right and that's kind of what i was getting at it seems like the assistant down there does a lot of the and i mean we can go through to the next it, it seems like there's some duplication between the two job duties I mean, between the uh, assistant and the uh, and the, the super, right? Well, I mean, there there is. I would expect there is some overlap. Well, you're always going to have that when you've got an administrative assistant, right? Because mm -hmm. the because the function of an administrative assistant is to do all the things that the person doesn't actually get to, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, well, it's not for me right. to say. It's up to uh, Tom see. whether you're going to take any comments from the floor or not. So, probably uh, not. I was going to say it's. Um, Given that we're not deciding now, um, I'm going to not open the floor for questions. It's a, or discussion. Yeah. It's just. Um, Somebody wants to express an opinion to one of us, then they can do that outside of the. Meeting. I was going to say, I, I think there's there'll be plenty of opportunity between now and when we make the decision for us to uh, to talk to people. And I I will say that uh, there are several people that I intend to seek out their thoughts on this matter mm -hmm. um, individually. Yep. And so. Um, and I'll probably also ask Sharon for a copy of this um, video 
of the video of this meeting. Yeah. Of the uh, just unedited. Um, and then my thought is that we've got, I mean, we've got Lindsay, we've got the superintendent who is um, primarily in a foreman type responsibility. Yep. It's like, but we do need, we, we are hiring someone to, if you will, hold the bag and make the decisions. It's like the one that, the one that we're empowering to make the calls. Well, I mean, one thing that's clear is both of them like to be in charge. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Neither one of them is going to have a problem making a decision. Yes. He's got to decide who's going to make the better decisions for the town. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, <laughs> neither one struck me as being particularly like uh, fraught about making a decision about something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Anything else that we should discuss? It is getting on, and we do want to. Uh, no. address the remaining agenda items numbers six and seven all right so moving on town hall building use by community groups um, this is a, this is specifically being engendered by the specific request that is next on the agenda I, that I by item number seven on the agenda but I built the agenda this way because I wanted us to discuss our thoughts on this matter in abstract and then based on that then make any decisions about that my thought is that i don't know if we may decide to come we, up with some sort of we, policy or we, we may have decide historically to allowed pretty much anybody to use the town hall that requested it so long as the activity itself was not for profit mm -hmm. and how have we managed act in the past how have we managed access to the town hall after hours Because that's because that's because so we, we have, have a request for sale. Meets here once a week, and, and um, they have a key. Apparently, it's been the group's been meeting here for I was told you know, twenty years or so. Yeah. I think what, what's interesting and, though is that's not profit, and I believe. But uh, well, the coordinating committee is going co-op, so it's not profit either. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that particular group that currently uses the building um, comes in, turns off the alarm, they have their own supplies, they take care of what their, their function, they clean up. If, if I didn't see the supplies there, I would never know they came in with mm -hmm. because nothing is disrupted. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only group that I'm aware of that has used the building off hours. But if you do allow somebody to use the building off hours, you need to either provide them with a way to get in and the code or the security alarm. Or someone's got to open the building. Or somebody's got to open the building. And if that person isn't a volunteer opening the building, then you need to provide wages for the person who does come in and do that on an off, off schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or they, or if an employee with access were willing to do that on a volunteer basis, you can't ask an employee. No, I, I would. No, I would not basis. ask them. But if someone <laughs> said, someone, someone said, I know a group and I would like to open the building for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like fine. for instance, I don't think I have anything planned for the 13th. So if somebody needed me to open a building for that, I can do it. Mm -hmm. For instance. Yes, that's. She changed that. They changed that date now. No, oh, what mm -hmm. date is? You it? look well. I have it in your, I the email. I think it was the 27th. Yeah, I was, oh, the 27th. Yeah, I was, was going to get to that when we got to agenda item yeah. number seven. Yeah. And then do we have a policy about yeah, that's use of the building by people with access? I mean, the... Not that I'm aware of. I couldn't find anything. Um, I, I did don't have any policies on that. Put up a waiver. Up a sample. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer form for people who <laughs> want to use the that's building that's so that regardless of what the event is, because once you open the building to events, you cannot cherry pick who can and cannot use the building, much like the flagpole situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you can say it's all for only nonprofits, I think you could get away with that, but, but this would be a disclaimer that because an event is happening here, that it's not an endorsement or agreement with the event or its materials, and they'll hold harmless the town for being on the property. Mm -hmm. 
except for insurance reasons. But other than that, you have full control over the building. If you want to let people in, you can. If you want to shut it down, not let anybody in, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. So. So, it's it seems to me that the, uh, I mean we've got we've got the we've got the group that's currently using it on a regular basis for 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 their purposes, and and we allow the person. To, I think we authorized a gentleman not but a year or two ago to do some sort of like parent gun training. We community did, thing. but he's actually he hasn't actually used he it. He hasn't used it. But um, we did authorize it. You did say that he could use it, um, and and that's the reason that I made the agreement, because I was going through old emails today, and that was one of the ones I had flagged. Yeah. So if you approve the form, not necessarily now, because you got it today, but um, then I can send it to the gentleman who wanted to do his program, see if he wants to move forward with it. We've also had a request from um, Mr. Fromm's attorney to use the town hall for the required, the mandatory outreach meeting that's required for anybody who wants to have a marijuana license. I don't know that this is big enough. Who? I that. wouldn't think so. <laughs> I don't think it probably is. But, so this is something that's been coming up. And, and we'll probably continue to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I would, and, and honestly, in that instance, I would refer him functionally to the school, and he's going to have to pay him whatever fee they need for the uh, janitor to open and close, mm -hmm. because I think it is going to need to be something that size yeah, to we accommodate. Have a capacity limit, and, and we don't want to disenfranchise anyone. We want yeah. to make sure that anybody who wants to go to that meeting well, can. Let me rephrase that because it's not our job to make that. No. But it would be in everybody's best, best interest. interest that everybody who wants to be at that meeting have access, and we don't want to disenfranchise anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So I would say we, we've got two classes of access here. Setting aside any decision as to who is allowed to come in, there it, we have a group that is currently coming in in what I would call unsupervised access. And then, because they have a key, they let themselves in at the appointed time oh, okay. and they let themselves out. The pre-existing. Yeah, yeah the, the pre-existing one is what I'm specifically talking about. And then, I think, and then and so conversely, there is what could be supervised access, where a representative of the town would, for, on, at a scheduled time, would open the building, would make sure that things stay under control, for want of a better term, and make sure everything's closed, cleaned up, closed up, and locked up when the event is over. Now, I think, and that and could you either... You might want to make sure you make whoever is using the, the facility responsible for their own cleanup. Yes. It, it, my thought is that the, 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 the town person here would be responsible to remind them, you need to clean that up, not to clean up after them, is what I have in mind. And then you need to put that around. They don't clean themselves up. There's a cleanup fee. I mean, if we have to have a town employee here to open it up, there's a, there's a, there's a fee to open up the building. With the thought being, if you do it when the town hall's open, well, then there's no, we, don't need you to, we don't need to open the building. Because conversely, they, if they wanted to have their meeting when the town hall's open, the whole issue of access and opening the building becomes moot. It just becomes, can they use the space? If they want to use it on a Thursday afternoon, we'll say. Conversely, if they want to have a meeting on Saturday, the building is typically closed on Saturday. We need to, the building would have to be open specifically for that event. So I guess that's, a, that's another angle of, dis, of distinction is the event happening when the building is open, or does the, is the event happening when the event happens? Does the building have to be opened? So, building open or closed? Well, in this instance, for the current request, it would have to be opened. Yes, it would. But I I want to I want to bring up that we might want to consider when we consider all this, we want to we don't want to write everything from the mind from the point of view of the building will have to be opened because we're going to get requests to do, th we will eventually get requests for when the building is already open. At which point then, do we really need to 
charge, do we, do we need someone designated to meet them and open the building and such? And these are all things we have to figure out. Kelly, do you have any experience with uh, or knowledge of other towns having building use and building access policies for community groups that we could um, No other sort of town um, that I've worked in has, has had this situation. The um, they, they, no, the schools. The Council on Aging had events that were off hours, but it was the Council on Aging. We really didn't have offices. Mm -hmm. In the building, yeah, there was um, it was a town entity a having the center, meeting. and the other two towns that I worked in, um, and, and then the one where nobody ever asked to use the building um, was the third town. So mm -hmm. this is this is a first. Okay. For me. No, I know, and it, it's. And I mean, my thought is, I know, I know that the um, the the school has a general policy. If the building's open, there's minimal charge. Um, because I've had, I've had Cub Scout meetings there when the building's open, and it's like, and that's fine, you just had to provide them proof of insurance, and I'm sure we, that group fit in with their policy of yep. nonprofits. But uh, that, that conversely, on Sunday, when we had our Pinewood Derby on Sundays, the school is not open on Sundays. We had to pay for the janitor to open the building and to be there for the five or six hours we had our event scheduled. Because the school had to pay someone to be there to let us in, because the building was not open normally open in that time frame. Is the library available for events like this? That's another thing that would happen in the other. Well, I think people the email said email forty people, and I don't in think the library, but the annex building. The, not for forty people. The annex building is not suitable yeah. for that size okay. of a group. I didn't know if they had a yeah. Um, the congregational church might be. I know they. I know they host. Or they they'll they'll, host, they'll host most anything for and and it's a donation if you care to donate for mm -hmm. using it. So. So at this point, I'm not sure we need to come up with a policy. Um, in order to in order to in order to consider numbers in order to consider agenda item number seven, but my thought is that. I'd, I'd like us to start thinking about that, like what are we interested in, in entertaining, what are we not interested in entertaining, so that we can provide, uh, consist, so that the community has guidance and understands what this space is available for, for what uses, and what kind of things, well, no, no thank you. Because I mean, if we, if we start allowing this, then other people are gonna start saying, well, can I have, can I do my thing there? Mm -hmm. I mean, it may not. It may not be an avalanche. It, it may, may just be a trickle. It may be a floodgate, but it may be a floodgate. Uh, that's my concern: is the floodgate. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and that's my concern too. I mean, and then also, the issue is um, uh, contingent, tangentially with this, is that we have um, right now. I believe there is um, one alarm code. So right mm -hmm. now we don't the. Anyone can open the building, and we don't know who opened the building. And I know we've talked about going to a key card system, and that would, to a, to a large extent, resolve that, because the key cards would be individualized, and the key cards are just a couple dollars. I wonder if you could do a guest key card for things like that. You can. Yeah. You can, actually. Yeah, that would be cool. yeah you yeah. can have one that you just issue out when somebody has an event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those things And cost. you know who it's signed out to during that period of time, so mm -hmm. yeah. you know who's responsible. Five dollar deposit, I think if it goes away, it's five dollars to replace. Yep. You disable it right away, saying it didn't come back, it's disabled, or you, when you give it out, it's only good during the, around the advertised time. Yeah. They can't get in off hours, and if they don't return it, they lose the five dollar deposit, we get a new one. But that, that's predisposed, that's, Presupposed on having a key card access system, which I think is something we would have to want to consider uh, as part of the next uh, We've board actually, article. We've um, actually discussed this with the electrical inspector and what it would take to wire up the building and get it mm -hmm. and get it done. Cool. So it's a, it's 
in the works, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, 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 know it's, I know the key card access has come up before in discussion, and so I'm not surprised it has been discussed. And I know it's probably also in conjunction with uh, a fire alarm in the building or tangentially related to that, or has that been, is that a completely separate discussion? It's a completely separate discussion. Okay. They're not interrelated at mm -hmm. this point in time. So do we have, as a board, do we have any interest in developing any kind of policy here, or are we intending to, to, to wing it and approve things ad hoc until such time as it seems like, a, and, and wait until later when, and see if a policy becomes something that we decide, change our mind and say, yeah, we're gonna need a policy. Well, I feel, like, my opinion is I feel like we should set up a policy. My question is, if we do something ad hoc currently, does that open us up for any saying, no, well, you already did it once before, setting precedent? You are setting precedent, and it is precedent until you set a policy. So with the flagpoles, right, Boston had that little snafu where they wouldn't let a particular group fly a flag, but they had allowed other groups. They set a policy that now nobody can fly flags, and, yeah. they're, and they're covered, they're fine. Right. So as long as you set a legal policy, you should be fine in the future. If you want to do it ad hoc until you decide. So. And, and the policy can be, can cover what we want to cover, and we can leave ad hoc the way what we want to leave ad hoc. As an example, we could say the policy, the policy could say what types of groups are allowed to do it, but when you they want access to be out. Profit, for profit, right. but you right. are not content based your Yeah, well and that's no, no, and well I, and that and that, exactly. and that was that was and, and what my recommendation was gonna be is that from a and and I and and actually I don't think that there were formal four oh one three C or four oh whatever, four oh five oh five oh one three C whatever. I'm it's I'm Alphabet soup at this point in the evening, so what, whatever. All right, a nonprofit. Okay, I don't think they're actually even quite that organized yet, right? Um, you know, I I think it's, <coughs> and I don't know how you all feel about it. I I think it's good for the community to be able to use the space. Period. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I think that's that's a, a benefit to the town. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would if I was going to write a policy tonight, which we don't, I don't think we intend no. to, right? <laughs> it would be something along the lines of that, you know, basically that we could charge fees up to whatever we think this, you know, the cost would be to the town yeah. that for any particular whole, event. But it will not account for the deficit in the budget. Because it goes to the general. No, fund. I, I, under so, I understand so that. So we need to plan ahead, right? Going forward, if this is what you want to do, we need it. We need like a a, a small. Uh, well, and that's what I was thinking. Is that yeah. is that in in other in other years, you know, maybe there's a line functioning under under same under like municipal buildings, which might be like mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you know, access. Just something to think about. Yeah. You know, or a revolving ones. account. No, you can't, you can't have a revolving account, account for or that. something like that. So there's, no, very, okay. there's very limited situations. Revolving, yeah, revolving accounts Can are I specifically governed by... pause real quick? Because we're past... Yeah, yeah, we're oh, we are. <coughs> <coughs> All right. So, believe it or not, I'll make a motion that we continue the meeting. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <laughs> Dear diary. <laughs> All right. Um, all in favor of continuing that. discussion, please say aye. 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 All right. Um, all right. So, I mean, at this point, I think the only the only policy aspect I think that we need at this point, or maybe two pieces of policy, is that the space be that the groups allowed to use this are non-profit slash community type groups and my thought is this is not a viewpoint based one but the idea is we don't this is not a space for businesses to conduct business this is a space for the community to organize itself inform itself and such and so that's that's my thinking there what do you guys think of, of that 
proposal or that concept? Do we need to true it up some? Miss something, you're thinking a lot. Yeah, it's okay. It may just be that my brain's moving slow at this point. Um. <coughs> I think we just, I think we need to, I think we need to be careful, right? Um, I think nonprofits are a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I don't know if we can phrase it as community based groups, but I think we can clarify that the events themselves need to be not for profit i.e. they can't use the town hall to throw a paid Fundraiser. whatever right um, for anybody right so you know nothing with a cover fee n nothing with a cover charge mm -hmm. right um, you know without an explicit exception if it's like you know a nonprofit doing like a fundraiser play upstairs maybe you know mm -hmm. there would need to be some verbiage around that Right, um, but uh, I think there also has to be, if it's if it's going to be something that is run by, and and a good example would be the the meeting that Mr. Fromm wants to run. They don't know what their headcount is, and I think any usage needs to have a clear delineation of what the expected attendance is yeah. in the and, request in as saying. part of the request right mm -hmm. <coughs> you know because I, I think and that if there's it, that that we reserve the right to reject the request if we think that the attendance estimate is not like accurate enough to keep us within the the you know, population in the room, sort mm -hmm. of a thing. Yeah, and, right. And I believe we because that because that way, from a standpoint of if we have concerns that it's going to look like the, I was getting ready to walk over to the board of health meeting a couple months back, and people were like, "Don't bother," <laughs> right? <laughs> Attendance is too big, I, right? I heard Ran about out that. of room, right? So if there's a chance that you know a request could generate that sort of thing, since it's an unknown attendance, I think we need to reserve the right to say mm, no, just because we don't want to. We don't want to be like part of something <coughs> like that where where there's like overrun, right? Mm -hmm. At least with the town board meeting, they had the option to just reschedule, right? We don't have that control over an event like that. So, mm -hmm. thoughts? Um, no, I think you're on the right track. I think that those are good ideas. Not sure how that's going to help you with the current request. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, definitely should have that everybody, either the group who's putting on the um, event, will accept liability for the attendance because you can't, you won't necessarily be able to get everybody to sign a waiver. A waiver, but the group itself should accept responsibility. Yeah, and they are a steering committee or a board, so. Mm -hmm. They, sh they should be able to do that mm -hmm. on behalf of themselves. Yeah. So. And you're going to limit it to just this room for now? I, I mean, you so. don't want to, you know, people meeting in the kitchen or the right. town clerk's office or the front hallway or. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think we limit it to the banquet room. Limit to this specific. Space. Space. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, I would be comfortable with this request to say, is to authorize the use of the banquet hall for that date and that time frame. Yeah, and with your with your offer to um, allow them access to the building, and I expect your intent. Theoretically. Uh, well, her, well, she offered to do she it. She said I didn't, theoretically. That's why I repeated oh. it. That's all. <laughs> okay. Well, on the expectation that Beth would actually do it, <laughs> that um, or that that we would find someone willing to do it, yeah. Beth or yeah, someone else. Yeah, this will else. be on the twenty seventh at ten thirty. Yeah. That, yeah. that that we that that or the, in general that 
someone be that right now that someone with access be willing to provide it yeah. Yeah. and that they be present for the whole time and, they, and, that and, they, they, and they're not going to pay me extra for doing it anyway so yeah. that's and true that, yeah and that, and that they and that they vouch that the group that that it that the group who had the space cleaned it up properly when it was done they left things as, about as nice as they found them yeah they left my lawn nicer than they found it so hmm? I, I'm not expecting a problem with the, <laughs> any particular group that's that we're think that is in mind now I'm just I'm trying to deal with the um, the the trickle or torrent of um, future requests yeah, which can happen you know you can deal with those specifics yeah, yeah. but I, but I mean and my thought is day. from in terms of time of day and such I think we'll leave that ad hoc for now but um so so you're gonna have a motion to approve the current request I well, would motion to well, approve the current well request. technically we're not on, on that agenda item yet so I, just let me let me circle back we can finish six and we can go to seven and we've okay. pretty much discussed it so the intention is that um, Communities. It, our intention is community slash nonprofits mm -hmm. um, are what we're intending to allow use of the space. Um, the guiding light being, is this is this um, <coughs> benefit or building the community? And that's uh, no. Okay. I don't think we can. I don't think okay, we can. Okay, we, okay. Can't, okay. we can't. Con we can't content. We can. Okay. We can say nonprofits definitely. Mm -hmm. I think we can say. Um, for for other entities, right? They can't run an event that is run for profit, mm -hmm. yeah. and that um, you know other use that, that that's that some of those uses are, are at the discretion of the board of selectmen. Yeah, and so uh, j just theoretical. What about a uh, fundraiser where they they're not charging admission, but they're making a presentation and saying, "Will will you support orphans in Africa?" Is it a four hundred one three C? A five hundred one three C. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You went through something. Okay. No, no, that's and that's and and, and, and no, but and, and talking through this and saying it, it's like it's like not registered nonprofits or however we want however we want to qualify registered five hundred one three C is to me sufficient mm -hmm. is like registered nonprofits and, yeah, and, may and, fund so you may can fundraise be a nonprofit but not be a tax exempt nonprofit five hundred one C three is strictly for tax federal exempt. tax right. Oh, and there's no also violence. a not-for-profit category. There are not-for-profit category. categories, yeah. And you would be certified by the Attorney General, not okay. by the Fed. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. So that and, there are just... Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and one of the reasons why I'm say, um, I'm kind of focusing on the categories is like Friends of the Brookfield Town Hall has used this event for, or this space for, mm -hmm. you know, community education and what have you, right? Um, so... Yeah, so if you've got like a garden club, yeah, mm -hmm. and they want to have a winter meeting, and they've got a big turnout. Right, and I mean, and even and if the they're not a five club, three, uses the annex building and stuff right. like so that. Right, so there, there yeah. are options, but right. just you know, if they yeah. want to use this one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Yeah, but I mean, my thought is, is that for for a a non so we want to say nonprofit for uh, no cover uh, we're not no cover charges or admission is our intention. And fundraising should be done by nonprofits is our gen is our general expectation. And other than that, it's like access will be handled by uh, on an ad hoc basis, depending on when they want to get access. We'll figure that out based on the request. Yeah, and I mean, we won't have a policy on that yet. We'll see if we need a policy. We'll figure it out. But until then, we're not going to overthink this. I would recommend. Yeah, I would say we don't need to overthink it tonight. I think we need a policy. I think it would be good to have it on an agenda in the not too distant future, like in the next like couple of meetings. Mm -hmm. Try to get a draft policy together that's consistent in a lot of like what we were just talking about. Yeah, and then we'll go from there. Right, but 